Hello everyone, I'm Lazy Ant. In our last video, we introduced Emperor Ku and the stories of his four wives. Next, we will discuss the fourth-ranked Emperor Yao among the five emperors. Emperor Yao, whose real name was Fang Shuan, was the son of Emperor Ku and Qing Du. After Qing Du encountered a divine dragon by the river, she gave birth to him after being pregnant for 14 months. Yao's eyes were different from ordinary people's, each of his eyes had two overlapping pupils and he wasn't particularly handsome. His eyebrows drooped at the ends, his head was pointy on top and wide at the bottom, giving the impression of someone who would experience a lot of hardships. Yao was the fifth generation grandson of the Huang Di. At the age of 13, he was granted a place called Dao by the then emperor, Ji. Yao subsequently managed this place in a well-organized manner. During Ji's reign, the country was in chaos with frequent disasters, various tribes in the east rebelled in succession, and ferocious beasts were harming the people. Ji ordered Yao to eliminate the rebellious tribes and dangerous beasts. At the time, Ji was overly indulged in pleasure, disregarding the various disasters and the chaos in the country, leading the people to protest and demand that Ji relinquish his power. As Yao had managed his territory very well, and had eliminated the rebellious tribes and dangerous beasts, his reputation surpassed that of Ji. Ji had no choice but to hand over the throne to Yao. After Yao ascended to the throne, the ministers wanted to build a grand palace made of gold and silver for him to display his imperial majesty. Upon hearing this, Yao said, A palace must indeed be built, but as for what it should look like, I have my own ideas. He then led the ministers to personally gather coarse logs and thatch from the mountains, built a few thatched huts as his sleeping quarters, and built more than a dozen large thatched huts connected together as a grand hall for discussions with the ministers. The ministers suggested, living in such a thatched hut is no different from the common people. How can it display your majesty? However, Yao replied, the people are suffering greatly now. Building luxurious palaces exhausts the people and wastes money, and an emperor who brings suffering to the people has no dignity. An emperor's duty is to alleviate the worries and troubles of the people. After saying this, he took a few ministers to visit various places to understand the people's conditions. One day, Yao saw a man moaning by the side of the road. He went up and asked concernedly, What's wrong with you? The man weakly replied, I'm very hungry. Yao then took out his own dry food and handed it over saying, Eat, it's my fault that you are hungry. The man was moved to tears and began to eat voraciously. Yao said to the ministers with him, Take a portion from my own food ration and distribute it to the hungry people. The ministers asked, What if your food is not enough? Yao replied, I can eat less and have more wild vegetables. The ministers, upon hearing this, all followed Yao's example. The next day, Yao and the accompanying ministers arrived at the entrance of a cave dwelling next to a mountain, intending to ask for water to drink. However, a woman's voice came from inside, There's no one at home, please don't come in. The minister said, Don't be afraid, girl, the emperor is here, please open the door. The woman didn't want them to come in, and she was almost crying in her urgency. At this moment, the woman's father, carrying firewood, came from a distance. After putting down the firewood he said, I'm sorry, the woman in the cave is my daughter. Because our family is poor and she has no trousers to wear, it's inconvenient for you to enter. Upon hearing the father's words, Yao felt instantly distressed. He quickly opened his bundle, took out a pair of trousers, and handed them to the woman's father, saying, I'm sorry for not managing the world well, causing your daughter to have no trousers to wear. The old man was so touched that he burst into tears. The girl inside the cave and the ministers outside also followed suit and wept. On the way back to the palace, Yao passed a small town and saw a criminal tied up and paraded in the streets. He went over and asked, What crime did he commit? Someone nearby replied, He stole food. Yao asked the criminal, Why did you steal food? The criminal responded, There was a drought in our area and we had nothing to eat. Yao said, The inability of the people to resist disasters is my responsibility. 
The fact that they have to steal due to hunger is also due to my failure in educating them. Tie me up as well. The accompanying ministers hurriedly knelt down to apologize, but Yao still ordered them to bind him and stand next to the criminal. People from all around flocked to watch, moved to tears by the scene. After observing the people's conditions, Yao spoke to his ministers in the thatched hall, saying, People are hungry, lack clothes to wear, and commit crimes. These are all my faults. I need to issue a decree of self-accusation to review my mistakes before the people. Afterwards, Yao set up a drum of daring advice on the left side of the palace gate, where people could strike it to offer Yao suggestions. Yao also had a tree of slander placed on the right side of the palace gate, where people could stand next to it and comment on Yao's mistakes. With the assistance of his ministers, Emperor Yao managed to make the country prosperous and strong, with the people living in wealth and peace. In their leisure time, people had a lot of spare time to play games. One day, an 80-year-old man named Rang Fu was playing games with everyone, attracting a large crowd of onlookers. An observer, seeing this happy scene, exclaimed with emotion, This is all thanks to Emperor Yao. Our Emperor Yao is truly great. Rang Fu didn't think much of this remark. He said, I work when the sun comes out, I rest when the sun sets. The food I eat is what I plant myself. The water I drink is from the well I dug. The clothes I wear are what I weave myself. How has Emperor Yao helped me? The questioner was left speechless. But Rang Fu's reaction was precisely what Yao had hoped for. Yao never regarded the peace and prosperity of the country as his own achievement. In his eyes, all of this was his duty as an emperor, and the people enjoying happiness did not need to be grateful to him. Legend has it that Yao appointed Gao Yao as the chief justice, who was sharp, efficient and impartial. Any case that came to him could be smoothly resolved. Gao Yao was able to do this mainly because of the unicorn sheep, Yangshe, that he raised. Yangshe was very smart and naturally understood right from wrong. Gao Yao always brought Yangshe with him when he was adjudicating cases. If he encountered a criminal, Yangshe would butt him with its horn. If the person was innocent, Yangshe would not do this. Thus, Gao Yao just needed to observe Yangshe's behavior to know whether the accused was guilty. As Yao grew older, he needed to select a successor. However, his son Dan Zhu was not up to the task. He believed it would be better to find a young and virtuous person to take over the role. So he asked the four mountain gods, Who among you can take over the imperial position to serve the people? The four mountain gods said, We are not virtuous enough, but we've heard of a young man named Shun who could be suitable to inherit the imperial position. Upon further investigation, Yao found that Shun was indeed very suitable as a successor. However, for the sake of the people, Yao was still very cautious. He decided to observe Shun in disguise. One day, Yao came to the field and saw Shun focusing on plowing the land. Interestingly, Shun did not whip the oxen, but hung a winnowing fan and kept knocking and shouting to encourage the oxen to pull the plow with more effort. Yao felt that Shun was wise and kind-hearted. If he was so caring for the oxen, he would surely have even more love for the people. So Yao discussed some issues about governing the world with Shun in the field. Afterwards, Yao visited the surrounding area of hundreds of miles, and the people nearby all praised Shun. As a result, Yao decided to let his two daughters, A Wang and Nuying, marry Shun to observe whether he could treat his daughters fairly. Yao also appointed Shun as an official in the court, allowing Shun to govern the country in his stead. Dan Zhu naturally refused to accept Yao's approach. He joined forces with the San Miao tribe in the south to rebel, trying to overthrow Yao's rule. Yao did not change his decision because of this, but instead personally led the army to the south, where the two armies had a fierce battle. Because Yao's army was united in spirit, they defeated the alliance of Dan Zhu and San Miao in one fell swoop. Some say Dan Zhu died in this war. Others say he committed suicide out of fear of punishment or drowned himself. Yao loved his people like his own children and set a good moral example for the people. Even the tribes from all four directions were influenced by him and sent envoys to pay homage. 
After Yao abdicated the throne for 28 years, he passed away, and the people were grief-stricken upon hearing the news. For three years, no music was heard in the country, and everyone was missing Emperor Yao. In the Analects of Confucius, it is recorded that Confucius praised Yao as a great emperor like a mountain. Yao was so high and great that only he could learn from heaven. His grace was so vast that people couldn't find words to praise him. His achievements were so great, and the etiquette system he established was so brilliant. Yao set the precedent for the abdication of emperors. By doing this, he not only showed his broad-mindedness, but also set an eternal example for future emperors. Although this may not necessarily be a reliable historical fact, this legend has played no small role in Chinese history. In later history, Wang Mang's usurpation of the Han Dynasty and Cao Pi's proclamation as emperor both used the method of abdication to emphasize the legitimacy of gaining royal power so as to avoid troubles during power transitions, thereby indirectly reducing bloody repression and killing. Yao is the saint with the highest morality in ancient times. Many supernatural miracles appear in his stories, and these stories have a very strong moralistic color. This is because people project their imagination of an excellent monarch onto him. Like the story of Gao Yao and the unicorn sheep Yangshe, it is said that during the reign of Emperor Yao, the legal system was just and clear, and there were never any unjust, false, or mistaken cases. From this, we can see that there are too many injustices in reality. People yearn for a just and righteous world, and they also hope that future rulers will take Emperor Yao as a benchmark, learn Yao's morality and governance methods, and the era under the rule of Emperor Yao in the legend is precisely the peaceful era that people hope to live in. When people in later generations encounter bad monarchs, they always remember the virtues of Emperor Yao and call for the appearance of a wise monarch like him. Later, people built many tombs for Emperor Yao. As recorded in the classic of Mountains and Seas, both Mount Yu and Mount Di have tombs of Emperor Yao. To this day, various ceremonies are still held to commemorate this wise ancient emperor. In the next time, we will discuss the last one of the five emperors, Emperor Shun. The most famous story about Shun is his filial piety towards his parents, which is a very important concept in Chinese society. Historically, there are even 24 acts of filial piety stories to emphasize its importance and at the same time to advise future generations to shoulder the responsibility and duty of taking care of their elderly parents. The story of filial piety moves heaven in Shun's tales is the first and most important one of these stories. Follow my channel to learn more about the history and stories of Chinese culture. You'll never have to worry about running out of topics and stories during your next gathering with friends. If you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe this YouTube channel. Every subscription is the biggest support. Thank you.